A list video on Modern Mouse? I know. I know. I didn't think that I would ever make a video like this. But sometimes they can be insightful, historical, and honestly, they're just kind of fun. And humans love to rank things. And last time I checked, I'm a human. Unless this is a simulation and we're all just imaginative beings in the eyes of a larger overlooking entity that could completely destroy us all. But hey, let's talk about Disney movies, huh? This year, 2023, marks the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company, and with Wish coming out as their 62nd animated feature film, there's a lot of ground to cover in terms of what movies are the best. Art is a subjective space, so instead of going off of what I think are the five best Disney animated films, because that would definitely get me into trouble, we're gonna go off of the box office numbers adjusted for inflation. So let's crack on with this list. My name's Josh Taylor This is Modern Mouse, and today we're talking about the top five highest grossing Disney animated films of all time. Number five, The Lion King. I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. If you grew up during the Disney Renaissance, then you'll recognize The Lion King as the king of Disney movies. It was everywhere. It made a ton of money. It became instantly iconic. If you want to ruin a party, just bring up the death of Mufasa and everybody is going to immediately hate you. Why is everyone leaving? Ask your friend Travis. You could also burst out into song singing Akuna Matana and everybody would sing along. Nobody would think you're weird. Trust me, this is a surefire party trick. You'll be loved by everybody. On a more serious note though, The Lion King was the pinnacle of Disney's renaissance. A lot happened with that film. I mean, the soundtrack for one was everywhere. Can You Feel the Love Tonight was all over the radio. Hakuna Matata and Circle of Life became phrases that are just normal now. I'm also pretty sure that a majority of people named their cat Simba or Mufasa a good while after this as well. Heck, this film even spawned one of the most successful and longest running Broadway productions of all time. With re-releases in theaters, it would end up making over $1 billion at the box office. And what's surprising is that there are films that made even more money. Because when this film came out, it felt like there was no way that Disney was going to top themselves. But they did, and that's why it's on to the next spot. Number 4. 101 Dalmatians it's difficult to think of the older Disney films as being anything other than iconic, but a lot of them didn't do well initially in theaters. Sure, they made some extra money through re-releases or merchandise sales, but movies like Bambi or Pinocchio or even Alice in Wonderland were seen at the time in the same way that we currently see films like the Ugly Dolls movie. Whoa! This... This is why you're the wisest doll in town. You're so bright. Remember that film from 2019? Pfft. No, you don't. None of us do. But adjusting for inflation, 1961's 101 Dalmatians was actually one of Disney's films that not only performed well in theaters, but surpassed expectations in massive ways. It was the biggest box office success of 1961. It doubled the box office numbers of the next highest grossing movie, which was West Side Story. Let me repeat that. West Side Story. Come on. It helps that the film is all about dogs because people just love cute dogs. Plus, Cruella de Vil is one of, if not the greatest Disney villain that's ever been. Also, the song about her slaps so hard that even Will Smith would be jealous. <laughs> oh. Number three, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The film that catapulted Walt Disney and his studio into the stratosphere. Before Snow White, Disney was a name most associated with five to 10 minute short cartoons, mostly featuring Mickey Mouse. And while Mickey was popular, the studio was of modest size. That changed with Snow White. After the film's insane success, making over four times more in theaters than any other film that came out in 1937, Disney built an entirely new studio off of the profits from one movie. Part of the film's appeal was the spectacle of seeing a full-length animated film, but part of it was the public's curiosity in seeing Disney take a classic fairy tale and turn it into a happily ever after on the big screen in full Technicolor. Without the success of Snow White, Disney's formula of retelling classic stories as animated movie musicals just wouldn't exist. Disney princesses wouldn't exist. Disneyland and the evolution of the amusement park industry wouldn't exist. 
the rest of this list wouldn't exist. I wouldn't exist. Well, I would, but I probably wouldn't be making videos about Disney movies all the time. Basically, what I'm saying is that we should all bow down to Snow White for creating the pop culture landscape that we have now. Without its success and Disney's success, the entire entertainment industry would not be what it is today. And yes, that's for better or worse. And you can't really say the same for any of the other films on this list. And because of that, I think Snow White deserves its flowers. Number two, Zootopia, or Zootropolis, or Zoomania? I mean, this film has multiple titles because it tried to cater to a global audience and the experiment worked. Entire scenes were changed in other languages and countries that would make the film feel more like it was made for whatever country it was playing in. A moose is the Canadian newscaster, for example. These tricks, plus an incredibly cute cast of animal characters, helped establish the film outside of the United States as a non-Eurocentric story. I'm not sure how universal the idea of fear-mongering and politics and policing is, but if you go off of the over $1 billion box office of Zootopia, then I'll just assume that everyone's afraid of or aware of these issues. It's something both endearing and kind of frightening to think about. Like, yeah, this is a really terrible subject, but at least you're not alone in thinking that all of these politicians are going to turn us on one another while the 1% take advantage of all of us. So, rest well in knowing that, I guess? In reality, though, I really love this movie. Outside of its social message, the city of Zootopia is just a treat to see. Each of the characters, shops, restaurants, and cultures in the city feel unique and a place that I'd like to roam around for a day. Not at a theme park, though, because it feels like it undermines the social message, but everything about Zootopia feels alive and kinetic. It's a film that is incredibly well thought out and was a genuine surprise to me when I heard that it had done so well internationally. It's even more of a surprise that it's made more money, if only slightly, than the other films on this list. And it just goes to show that not every Disney movie has to be about princesses and sing-along songs. But it does help because... Okay, okay. I was really enjoying this list, but I just, I know Live Action Lion King is going to be number one. And I just don't want to talk about it. Like, it's the worst remake, it's the most unnecessary remakes, and it's just, it has that awful dead-eyed animal realistic attempt at animation, and it's terrible. Like, but we have to, it's number one, right? No, actually, we don't. Uh, we're not going to talk about that dumpster fire here. Uh, okay, like, I'm, I'm on board with that, but like, how? I thought it made a ridiculous amount of money. It did, but Disney considers it a live-action remake, and so... For the sake of this list, we're just gonna kind of do the same. It's like a fun little loophole, Joe. Plus, uh, it's kind of like how I've created a bunch of different emails for every day of the year in order to get freebies from every place I go. That That's pretty awesome. Like that That's a good loophole, actually. Uh, how's that going? Well, uh, 365 different emails did destroy my computer with all of its spam, but... Mm. I do get a free Jamba Juice every time I go in. As long as Becky, the manager, isn't there, I think she's on to me. I mean, that's not bad. Free Jamba Juice anytime you want. That's, that's almost like a superpower. But, like, really, though, we have to talk about live action Lion King. Like, do we have to mention it at all? Like, it's some kind of honorable mention? Should it go on some worst of list? Well, let's never talk about the Lion King. But while we're also at it, no matter how much the comments tell us to... Let's never talk about Chicken Little either, but a worst of list isn't a bad idea. Uh, yeah, 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 I can do that. Give me a couple weeks. Um, I'll be back. Okay. Well, number one, Frozen slash Frozen 2. I know I'm cheating here because it's two films together, but if I didn't do this, then we'd be spending half of this video talking just about Elsa and Anna. Both Frozen and its sequel have made more money by a good stretch than any of the other films on this list, with Frozen 2 topping the list with nearly $1.5 billion. Not only is it the top grossing animated film of all time, because again, we don't count the live-action Lion King, it's an abomination, 
But Frozen 2 is number 13 of the top highest grossing films of all time as of right now. What? Does it deserve it? Well, that's a polarizing question, and to this day, I still get comments about how much people either love or hate the Frozen movies. Frozen is a film that proves that the formula starting with Snow White still works. A classic fairy tale, modernized to have a much happier ending, mixed with cute and funny sidekick characters, and a great soundtrack of musical numbers, is something that we just can't ignore. We all love a good song, and despite the fact that we all hate how often we heard Let It Go when the film first came out, you can't deny the earworm that Adina Menzel sang. Let it go, let it go. It's catchy, it's triumphant, and it's the most 21st century anthem I've ever heard. Work sucks, just let it go. Your boyfriend broke up with you? He was a loser anyway, so just let it go. You told your friend Jeremy that he could borrow your sweater like three months ago and he still hasn't given it back and in fact the other day you saw him wearing it and he's been wearing it so often that people think it's part of his wardrobe now so it would be weird if you decided to ask for it back because people would think that you were stealing from him and not the other way around because he actually stole it from you and your friends are wondering why you're so obsessed with Jeremy and his sweater but you just really want your sweater back but hey, let it go. And then Frozen 2. It became one of the biggest box office success stories of all time, based on a story around indigenous people and land ownership, which is crazy. But I don't think that most people purchased a ticket to see that. They wanted more funny sidekick moments with Olaf, more killer songs, and more of Anna and Elsa being best sister friends. The funny thing is, Frozen 2 is the better movie, and in my opinion, the sequel makes the original film better. Should it be the highest grossing animated film of all time? Maybe? Box office numbers don't necessarily reflect the quality of the art, but in this case, the movie is, at the very least, broadly appealing, and while I love a good film focused on artistry and mastering the craft of movie making, sometimes a movie so broadly appealing is just fun, and people like to go to the movies for fun. The Frozen films, they're fun. So what do you think are the top five best animated movies of all time? And do they line up with these box office numbers? Also, if you're interested in hearing more about this, you can listen to the exclusive Patreon podcast where Joe and I talk about this at length. And besides the podcast, there's also exclusive videos on Patreon that you can get for just a few dollars a month. It helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. So until next time, my friends, thanks for watching and keep moving forward.